what we know is that oftentimes when you're getting a prescription for some sort of psychotropic medication, people often don't respond very well to the first one that they try, right? And that can be a really, really shitty, shitty experience. I'm sorry, swearing, sorry, but it's necessary. Like it, it can be really bad. Like usually if you're at the point where you're going to try a psychotropic medication, it's because you really need it. And so having it not work is not great, let's just say. And that was British understatement. And then in addition to that, not only sometimes will it not work, it might also cause some really unpleasant side effects. So you're already in a bad, bad, bad place. And now not only is it not working, it's also causing you some additional stuff that you really didn't ask for. And that's not good. Mm -hmm. Right. So the idea is that we know that part of what contributes to the ways in which people differ in their response to drugs that we're prescribed is our genetics. So we know that, for example, we, there's lots of genetic differences that are super common in the population that change how we metabolize things like SSRIs or mood stabilizers, right? So, for example, like I'm taking escitalopram, right? I take that, no side effects, it works well for me. But somebody else of the same sex, gender, age as me, same diagnosis as me, being prescribed the same drug in the same dose could find that it gives them dry mouth and doesn't do anything for their symptoms. And we would like, we would attribute in part that difference to check to differences between the two of us in terms of the genetics that we have that determines how we metabolize that drug. Right. right? So the idea of this kind of testing is, well, wouldn't it be awesome if we could test those genetic differences and see what drug would work best, ideally before giving it to somebody so you don't have to go through that trial and error process, right? And where is the state of the science and clinical application? Yeah. So state of the <laughs> moving along, moving along. <laughs> so, so, but I think it's really important to understand the background, right? It's yeah, really of course. Yeah. As, um, as an idea, like particularly in psychiatry where non-response and side effects is such a big issue. So to be totally straightforward with you, this area of research is most advanced in the context of major depressive disorder. There is research going on for bipolar. There is research going on for schizophrenia, but it's most advanced in the context of major depressive disorder. There's been now three different... So that one of the highest levels of evidence that we use in this area of science is a meta-analysis, which is where you look at all of the individual little studies that have been done, looking at, hey, if we do prescribing for somebody's medicine based on pharmacogenetic testing, does it make the outcomes better for the person? Mm -hmm. So you take all of the individual studies that have asked that question and you slap them all together, and then you look at them all as one big lump, basically. So there's been three of those kinds of studies, meta-analyses now, looking at pharmacogenetic testing for depression. And what they show is that there does seem to be an increased chance of both remission of symptoms and response to treatment. Those are two different outcomes, right? Mm -hmm. So, But there does seem to be an increased chance of, of both remission of symptoms and response to treatment if you're having a pharmacogenetic guided medication prescription. There's a lot of caveats around this though. Mm -hmm. Okay. One is that, so it, it's about, uh, you've, you're about 50% more likely to have some sort of treatment response or remission essentially, which sound, which does sound like a lot. However, there's a lot of margin for error in that number. Okay. So it could be a lot less than that. It could be a lot more than that. We're kind of uncertain about how we're uncertain about how certain it is. Yeah. <laughs> I get what you're saying. <laughs> so, so, so there, there, there is that. that. Another problem is that there is a risk of bias in the studies that have been published. So for example, drug company, the companies that market the tests have been involved in some of the studies that have been published. Mm -hmm. uh, Sometimes the reporting is not as straightforward as in the papers is not as straightforward as you would have liked, for example, right? So those are, those are things that make us think of bias. Mm -hmm. So, so, so I think the best way to summarize it is that it is a really active area of research. Um, the signs are looking really promising, but it's really complex 
And so I think it's worth talking, you know, if you're interested in that sort of thing, I would suggest talking to like a pharmacist who specializes in psychotropic medications or a psychiatrist and, and, you know, to keep up to date with them about like what the evidence is showing because it's evolving really fast.